HTTP is really easy to use in Node-RED, but it can be a little daunting if you have a blank screen and you're trying to get going. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go to openweathermap.org. We're going to look at their web service. We're going to pull that data into Node-RED, and then eventually we're going to create our own web service so that we can uh, exercise some of the skills we've learned here. In our first example, we want to get weather information from openweathermap.org. You can click on API. We want to get current weather data. And let's just start uh, right here. So notice that the call should be api.openweathermap.org. But when I hover down here at the bottom, you'll see the URL says sample. And that's because really you're supposed to get your own key. But let's just click and it works. So this is what a web service does. You know, a machine asks for data and it returns data back. In this case, it's fairly readable. It's a, it's a JSON. We can actually copy this. And let's go um, all right let's go ahead and paste that in here so we can read it a little better um, under the coordinates you've got Latin long under weather we've got the ID so there's some drizzle light intensity and then under main we have temperature and humidity. We'll come back to that one. So let's go ahead and see if we can just get this data into Node-RED as quickly as possible. So it works in a web browser. So let's do a copy. And in here, in Node-RED, we're going to drop an HTTP request. We're going to paste that URL in there. And then we need some way to trigger it and some way to view what happens. So we have a timestamp. And really, it's just going to inject a timestamp, which triggers the HTTP request, which will then print to the debug window. So we're going to deploy, click the button, and lo and behold, we got this string. So this is really just a string. Notice how um, it's definitely not very uh, formatted into JSON objects at all. Um, it's going to be a little easier for us to use this if we make a, a little change here. Let's go ahead and have this publish as a parsed JSON object instead of the string. Now when we click it, um, we can see that there's this object. And remember that if we drilled into main, there was this thing called temperature. OK. Well, data is coming in. Um, now we need to. Uh, do a few uh, little tricks to access the uh, items in the JSON object. This is actually extremely easy. So I'm going to just drop a debug. And instead of message.payload, I can actually add message.payload.main.temp. And that temperature is in Kelvin, by the way. Um, we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. So dot main dot temp. So this is really cool. Um, Node-RED works so well with JSON that it's just kind of intrinsic to it that you can pretty easily um, 
parse into and get the, the data out of JSON that you want. So if we hover over this, you'll see that the whole payload is here, but down here we get just the temperature. Okay. You could certainly, you know, build an email or a tweet, and you could also put a, a function in here. So if the temperature is something, it sends an email or it sends a tweet and so forth. But let's just show it on a screen. I installed the uh, Node-RED dashboard. If you don't have it, you can install it uh, using the palette manager. So let's just add a couple of these things. Oops. Okay, so real quickly, since I haven't used the dashboard before, I just have to add a new UI group, um, add, all right, this guy, add. All right, let's call this guy temp. This guy, let's call it um, humidity. Okay, now remember we were digging into this JSON object using this debug mode. There's several different ways um, we can do that. You could do it with a function. Let's just use a change. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire this guy up here. And it's going to change its output, which is its message.payload. But we want to get the message.payload dot main dot tip and then let's go ahead and get humidity here main dot humidity Deploy. Go ahead and click this button here. Now to look at our dashboard, we use the URL of our Node-RED instance and we add a UI. And lo, lo and behold, there is temperature and humidity. Now, really quickly, um, we probably want our temperature to be in imperial units. And um, what we want to do is go back to the API. I want current weather data. And this is the one we really want. I'm going to copy that. And we're also going also gonna to figure out how to get the units we want. So let me start by pasting this in. All right, so London, UK. Heck, let's go ahead and change this. Dallas, US. Then we're going to add something else here. So ampersand. Um, units equals imperial. I would like that. And we need to add our API key. If we just click on this, we'll see that it's the app ID. So we're going to add our app ID. Let me go get my app ID here. Uh, sign in. I'm going to get my key. You can see I have a temporary key here for this demo. All right.
and really an easier way to do this would have been to do this. All right, it works. We see Dallas is coming in. So we do done, deploy, and voila, we're pulling, we're pulling in the information for our city. Let's do a couple more things to show you how easy it is to create a web service. So um, to create a web service, what you really need is an HTTP endpoint. And you also need an HTTP response. And in between here, you're going to need to fill in your data somehow. So let's put in an URL. So this, we're going to do localhost colon 1880 slash whatever we add here. So let's say this is my URL. All right, so one easy way to put static data in is to use this template. All right, let's just do this. There's some static text. And then the last thing to do is to format the headers of the HTTP. Let's go ahead and just try this and see what happens. All right, so now if we close a couple of these, localhost 1880 my URL. Looky there, there's this text. Now, so I'm gonna paste in something here that I saw done in another example. I'm not sure if it's strictly necessary. Um, it's, it worked without this, but we're setting up the headers and the header type to be a JSON. Of course, my template wasn't a JSON, but we certainly could do this. Let's do serving up uh, JSON. All right, we want to consume this. Really super simple. Just like we showed before. I'm going to copy this URL. Copy. And then we're going to grab this uh, HTTP request. Wire that guy. Where this guy deploy? Ta da! There we're consuming our own web service. All right, so let's do one more thing. Um, right now, uh, we're doing a static um, value. Um, what if you want to do a live value? Well, quickly, I'm going to drop a slider text value. And I'm going to put that on the default page. This is on the default page. And we'll do a debug. If we go to our UI, there's a slider. So we want that number to be shown in our web service. So how do we do that? Because essentially there was an event when you drug the slider, it printed. It wasn't, it doesn't really save it anywhere. It's, it's saved on the debug screen. So I'm gonna do a slightly advanced function here. And I'm gonna save this to con global context. So in this function, whenever we drag that slider, it's gonna globally set that value to a variable we've created here called slider. Let's go ahead and hook that guy up. All right, now we need to put that value into here. So I'm gonna delete. We're gonna put a function in. And that function says, we're gonna define a variable. We're gonna globally get that slider value. 
and we're gonna return it to message.payload. We're gonna say slider set to plus A. Let's go ahead and deploy this guy. Let's go ahead and make sure we run this guy a little bit. So this is at six, and then we go and get the value. Slider set to six. This is only really scratching the surface of what you can do with HTTP. Right now I'm just uh, hosting, you know, services, but you can host full-blown web pages and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, much more advanced than what I'm showing, so. Thanks for watching.